Liam, yeah, we na- we named yeah. a dinosaur after you today. We did. Yeah. Yeah. He's a big turtle. His yeah. name is Liam. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just wanted you to know. <laughs> he's he's guarding the Raptors fuck pen. Yeah. We have a, we have a Raptor fuck pen. <laughs> this podcast contains explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Thundercast. My name is Christian. My name is Lucas. And I'm Liam, here with another podcast that just talks about movies. That's right. Today we are coming live from the Thunderdome. 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 <laughs> Two men enter, one man, one man leaves. leaves. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's right. Uh, today we are also sponsored by our, our Patreon sponsors. Uh, so thank you very hey. much to every single one of you. You will get a special shout out at the end of the show. Today... We are going to be talking about in our action-o-thon, which again, we have not come up with a better name yet. Um, but in our action-o-thon, last time we did Harrison Ford, this time we're talking about Gibson, y'all. Um, yeah. Most, most, more specifically, Lethal Weapon and the Mad Max franchise. Um, mm-hmm. At least the first three. Uh, but yeah, that's today's episode. We're going to jump yeah. right into the ingestion. Liam. All right. Uh, so I have not done much in regards to consuming things for reasons I'm not going to get into, uh, on the show, but I guess, uh, since I finally got myself a new copy, I've considered, uh, I've, or I've continued my uncharted playthrough or replay through, and I am just about done the, uh, second game now. And yeah, it's definitely an improvement over the first. Definitely. Yeah, I agree. Like I liked the first a lot. Um, but my biggest thing with it is that it was too short. And uh, Lucas talked about like this disconnection from the cutscenes of a playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one's a little bit more uh, consistent, I'd say. And uh, it also just has a lot of the stuff I love in like adventure movie. Uh, like, as I've said, Uncharted is essentially an action movie that you could play. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I remember when I, I remember when I played through the Uncharted games. I was just like, why do I have to play this game? I just want to watch it. Uh, <laughs> Liam, to be did, honest, did you most... say you you were missing the third one? Uh, no, I um. So I had to return uh, my, what is it? Uh, the Nathan Drake collection and uh, the last one. Hmm. Uh, be uh, what is it? Which is number four. Uh, once I'm done, I got a new copy of the Nathan Drake collection. But so once I'm done that, I'm probably gonna go looking for a copy of uh, uh was it of Thieves End? Is that um, what the third but... one's called? Thieves End. That's what the fourth one is called, the last one. Sorry. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, uh, in fact, those games, I was talking with a friend that they are insanely cinematic. Like, Mm -hmm. to be honest, like, the way action is, I kind of wish they would shoot action movies, like, the way some of these games look. Yeah, for sure. Honestly, the cinema, it's it's one of those games where the cinematography is genuinely very, very good. Like, they know how to shoot action better than most action movies. (laughs) Yeah, like, uh, uh, well, yeah, and like uh, just the way how like they do that thing like where the camera's always moving around, but you could still follow what's going on. Like, and it's not just in the playable ga- see- parts, like in the actual like uh, as they call it on the disc, like the movie parts. Mm. Um, this one I also feel like had a way better has a way better grasp on characterization and what's going on. Like I, I'm always a sucker for like people double crossing each other and trying to get the upper hand on one another. And there's a ton of that shit in this game. Yep. Uh, was in fact some of it I forgot about. Um, I uh, was it the one level I loved, which I forgot about, which is where um, it's Nathan. Uh, what is it after he? Uh, uh, was it after he essentially was found in Tibet? Uh, what is it? And he's just go, and then he has to go with this uh, explorer from a village, this guy named Tenzin, because of course you have to name a Tibetan dude that in a game. <laughs> yeah. But what I liked is the whole thing. Is that the like, name of the Dalai Lama? Yes. Yeah, we always name Tibetan characters Tenzin because that's the name of a Dal- <laughs> Makura, Dalai Lama. Um, but what I really liked with him is that he doesn't speak English at all. If they don't force this thing where it's like, uh, oh, it, there's this scene where he has to learn English to communicate or whatnot. No, it's just that he's just he says what he needs to say in his own language, and they just get and it mo- and it still manages to move the plot along. Oh, right on. I actually do, and I do kind of dig that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh. This game, I mean, it's remastered, so it's kind of pointless to talk about, but like the graphics are also a lot better, and I don't really have as much of the gameplay. Um, me- I was the gameplay mechanics have definitely stepped up. I was it, and even just the way it opens, like uh, Nathan Drake being in a uh, was it in a derailed train on a on a cliffside in the, in the Himalayas, 
and you have to like climb it up i'm like whoa like the hell of a way to start a game right right yeah sounds pretty cool um, for sure um and also on that subject i finally watched uh that short film they did with uh nathan fillion and stephen lang mm-hmm. oh yeah, yeah, yeah i thought you had right seen on. it before no i hadn't uh what it, uh, what is it i had heard about it but i had never watched it um it's pretty cool mm-hmm. it's definitely made on a budget yeah but, but they still managed to get as much as they do, uh, was it as they can done with the money they have is it a known director uh, he's mainly just d- done direct to video action films. Uh, I, I I saw it a long time ago, but if I remember right, they they kind of shot it in a way that made it look like the gameplay, right? Yep, like even uh, when the action scene starts, the uh, aspect ratio changes and it becomes a lot more wide. Mm-hmm. Um, so like uh, when they have to get to the, when uh, Nate gets out of a house and he has to get to the vehicle, it's really cool. Uh, was it? And it does look a lot like the game. Like obviously we're not going to do the whole set pieces where like there's big explosions all over the place and it's literally called Uncharted live action fan film. Yeah, that's literally <laughs> what it's called. The guy's name is Alan Unger. He's Canadian. Um, okay, Alan Unger. Yeah, and uh, one uh, was it like obviously everybody's known that Nathan Fillion would have been a perfect Nathan Drake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like for sure. In fact, to be honest, I kind of just wish I don't remember how the last game ends or whatnot. But instead of doing this fucking Tom Holland uh, Mark. Zuck or Mark Wahlberg thing, like why don't they just do a late sequel with uh, these guys? Yeah. yeah for <laughs> sure. Um. Um. And like, uh, there's even like the whole kind of things that I, again I love in stories like that, like the national treasure, like sitting around trying to figure things out with like the artifacts. Like, I mean, I know a lot of it is pretty stupid, but it's my kind of trash. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. I I, I love the National Treasure movies. To be perfectly honest, They're give me dumb, my schlock. But... Yeah. I mean, I like the first one a lot. I don't remember the second one very well, but it's it's not as good. But he does kidnap the president of the United States, which is which is <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm gonna kidnap a president of the United States. <laughs> doesn't um, doesn't quite live up to. I'm gonna steal it. I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> but, um. The one thing that did kind of throw me off in this short vent, and again, it's a nitpicky thing, is the fact that in just about every frame he's in, Sully has his trademark cigar in his mouth, mm. but it's never fucking lit. You never see any puffs <laughs> of smoke come off of that thing, and it was driving me crazy. That's great. Or at least if they did do any effects, they did not come across well, and I was like, oh, come on, guys. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. But no, uh... uh then I also watched uh, this one movie that uh, I'm super independent, but I'm really hoping it really gets some traction. It's a new film uh, starring a very uh, underrated character actor, uh, Bengal Denhouse, mm-hmm. called, uh, was it, who has been, oh man, if there's a character actor who's been screwed around so much, he is the guy. Yeah. No, he's gotten fucked over. Yeah, it's really um, unfortunate because he's so great. Yeah, so I'm, I'm smiling is... so much because I, I he's he's very much like Walton Goggins who yeah. if you know yeah, me yeah. you know I love the Gogs. And, yeah, the Gogs uh, is great. Yeah, yeah. No, and the movie is called uh, Turdshire Tough Guys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's essentially just a really short, well-made uh, what is a t- movie about a turf war between two gangs. Yeah, 92 minutes, real quick, in and out. It wasn't even 92. It was only like 70 minutes. Like, when was the last time you saw a 70-minute movie? Oh uh, yeah. Aside from like creep, I can't think of any. <laughs> yeah, no, it was uh, creep. I guess he's only seven. Yeah, right, right, right. But no, like uh, he's not the star, but he does play a major role. And uh, uh, was it essentially? It just follows uh, this guy uh, Bruno. Uh, was it who's part of one gang, and this other guy uh, Jace, who uh, started a bit. Uh, was it who essentially uh, there's through a whole misunderstanding that I'm not going to spoil. They essentially uh, just due to one of their idiot mistakes or whatnot, and the two of these guys. We're kind of friends. We're friendly enough. They don't want to start a thing, but after a like lot a lot of people, back- Liam, a lot of people have compared it to like Romeo and Juliet in, in yep. a sense, like a very same sex mm-hmm. Romeo mm-hmm. and Juliet. Yeah, and like uh, they also, uh, I think it's just like through like through a Guy Ritchie kind of convoluted confusion, like essentially the two <laughs> gangs are in start to a whole turf war starts between the two, and it's it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Do you know? Do you remember who directed it? Uh, fuck it. I have to look it up. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, it's one of those things. Um, 
Yeah, on that note, I'm glad Liam brought up Turd Shower Tough Guys um, because the three of us actually watched the movie. Uh, not yeah. to, not together, but uh, we watched it individually in our own homes. Also starring uh, the known character actor Bengal Denhouse. Um, this movie is called Quarterback Empire. Yeah, uh, yes. 1981's quarter, Quarterback Empire, uh, directed by Kate Jensen. Um, pretty small uh, uh, festival film. Didn't really mm. get very far. Didn't re- wasn't able to pick no. up a, a fact, huge distribution uh, from, deal. It was really hard for us to find this fact, one. Yeah, for, in fact, from what I understand, uh, because this movie, it had a really well good reception at uh, uh, was it at whatever film festival it was at? Mm-hmm. Is that a but, couple? Yeah, it was. That yeah, a but it never got a, picked up a distributor, and that led to uh, Kate Jensen uh, quitting directing. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and and Lucas, you you remind, reminded us that she mostly does voice work now. Yeah, yeah, I've I've, I've there's a couple of rumors that like mostly uncredited work, mm-hmm. like you hear voices in the background and like movies and stuff like that. Uh, that's that's what I've heard she's doing now. Yeah, I know for a while she was doing a lot of Walla. Yeah, um, yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, Walla yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Walla for anybody who doesn't know is when you 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 watch a movie and you hear like people chattering in the background. That's called mm-hmm. Walla. Um, it's literally gibberish. It's a lot of nothing. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so it's literally yeah. a bunch of people in a room with a microphone, just like improvising. Yeah. And they just, they just do whatever. Cause it's turned down so far that you can't understand what they're saying. Yeah. Uh, like, Lucas, but yeah. So Lucas and I, when we were in film school, we, we met a few people who, um, had actually worked with Kate Jensen and, uh, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's true. Very talented. Um, mm-hmm. anyway, uh, yeah. After, after quarterback empire came out, um, yeah, I didn't really get the following that she was hoping for, and, and she kind of fell off the face of the earth. I'm pretty sure yeah, this it just, was it just also... kind of dropped off the face of the earth. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure this was actually. Itself. I'm pretty sure this was actually uh, Bangle's first film because he looks pretty damn young here. Oh boy, mm-hmm. especially yeah. to how As he looks now. To now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. 1981. He, was... he did not age well. Yeah, no. Yeah. You know how well Mel Gibson, for example, when he when he did mm. Max Rock Rock Tansky, he was what like 28 or something like that. Like, something like that. Yeah, uh, very similar situation. So it's a sports movie. Um, and it's about, uh, Bengal Denhouse plays a character named Roy. Um, and Roy is, you know, a budding, uh, young professional who, uh, finds his way into the circuit, the sports circuit. Um, and, um, over time becomes quite good at his job. Um, mm-hmm. you know, like when he's working with his coach and whatnot, there, there's some scenes in that movie uh, with him and his coach, who's, who's a guy that I don't think he's ever done anything else either. I mean, he looks no, like, I didn't, he I didn't recognize lot, his name. I don't remember. He what looked it was. a lot like Ray wise, but mm-hmm. yeah. Mm. Um, and the, the two of them have, the, have a very uh, interesting relationship because the movie definitely starts with them not enjoying each other's company. <laughs> no, they fucking hate each other at the start. Yeah. And then, you know, you have your, your pretty good triumphant uh, moment at the end. Where... Yeah. It, it's kind of, it's kind of like the, their relationship is kind of like whiplash, except like in some ways more toxic in some ways less toxic. Yeah. Definitely I mean? not as boisterously aggressive, but there yeah. is definitely uh the undertones there are pretty uncomfortable. Well, I remember, mm-hmm. I remember the, the dinner scene when they're in the hotel lobby there or the, the restaurant mm-hmm. in the hotel. And uh, Roy um, has had maybe just a little bit too much um, to drink that night, which is which is also a, a major theme yeah. of the movie. Is, is and, Roy's yeah, addiction. yeah, and it was that I think that was like the tension was really high because that was right before like a big match, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's before his uh, was it? That's before his uh, uh, was it a really complicated scenario where his best friend who was on the opposing team got fucked over in a bad accident? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like I don't know if I could play these guys. But it's like, uh, but it's like, no, you have to go do that. It's like, but my best friend is literally in the hospital. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. don't want to fuck him over like this. Yeah, and you know, I think it, the movie's pretty old, so I think we can spoil it. Like, um, at the end there, when when Roy, um, the, at the very end, um, after the whole you know big match and everything, and they're able to to win the championship, and uh, and Roy is finds out that uh, his best friend there um, has succumbed to his injuries and is in the hospital and Roy um, having just won the, uh, the championship had conflicted feelings because he's, he's quite happy, but also obviously very distressed and has yeah. Been- and like the only reason he was able to win, like his, his friend is better than him is the thing. Mm-hmm. And the only reason he was able to win was because his friend was in the hospital. Exactly. And he, he becomes quite inebriated. And when he's driving to the hospital, um, gets into a pretty terrible car accident and unfortunately Mm -hmm. loses his life um which leaves coach 
and uh, and Roy's um, then girlfriend Monica um, to uh, have quite a interesting scene at the at the end there when they're at the graveyard. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a really sad movie. Yeah. It is. It's not. It's not particularly very happy. It has its moments. No, it's yeah. Like it definitely just, has its moments, but like the like whole when, thing is kind of like a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like kind of a, a, a Shakespearean fatal flaw. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for that, sure. That, like, that leads to his undoing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great film. Honestly, if you mm -hmm. can get your hands on it, I highly suggest it. It's it's a very hard one to find. I think... Oh, yeah, no, I had to I had to go to like seven different libraries to try and find it. Yeah. Um, I think when I when I downloaded it, there was like one seater. Which yeah. Was, which was absurd. <laughs> um, and... Uh, yeah, one that that one. It's probably it's probably Bengal Denhouse himself that was the seer. <laughs> yeah. It's like people got to see this movie. Yeah, he's an old man now. He's a really old man. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I think yeah. he's like I think he's like pushing seventy five now. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. It looks older. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> in fact, people forget also that um I was about like he's appeared in so many just major major movies, but he's always only in the background. That's right. And like yeah, he kind of like got he kind of like, got delegated to like extra duty. Yeah, yeah like he's uh like there are a few scenes where like in Armageddon where he's just in the background yeah. of like the U.S. Council. Mm -hmm. Well, he also <laughs> he in in kind of his later career in the '90s and whatnot, he was doing a lot of creature work. You know, so oh right, yeah. So he he wore a lot yeah, of yeah. like those monster monster movie scenes and and he was the guy in the suit. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because like when he's not when he's not like uh like in this movie he's pretty he's pretty like built just because it was it's a sports movie he has to be. Yeah, but like generally he's pretty lanky and that's kind of good for monster work. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's a very tall guy. He's very Doug mm -hmm. Jones looking. Um, but, yeah, yeah. But in in Quarterback Empire he wasn't uh he wasn't very staunch. You know, he was he's quite he's quite beefcakey. Um. And for a movie called Quarterback Empire, it has nothing to do with football. Which is, yeah, which is weird. Yeah, it's really lots weird. of cars though. Lots of car lots of cars. Yeah. Yep. So many cars. Yeah. There's also <laughs> that really awesome. Scenes. There's also that really awesome scene where like you can tell uh Roy's dealing with like so much stress in the situation and trying to come to terms where he has to do like that insane jump off a high dive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And exactly. like you could tell that mm -hmm. that's the only moment where Roy feels at peace is when he's doing something completely adrenaline driven. Oh, and yeah, like like the moment where he's like he's like going down. Uh, and like everything's silent in slow mo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and when yeah, ah, it, that scene when he's in the dugout though, and like when they're all mm -hmm. when they're all putting mm -hmm. like they're all putting in their their chewing tobacco, and he refuses because he's trying to trying to move past that part in his life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, you know what? <laughs> Fuck! I'm gonna say it right now since we all we've kind of gone off on a tangent, but I think collectively this is our recommendation this time. <laughs> yes, yeah, I would agree. Yeah, I would yeah, agree. Yeah. I do have two more, but yes, I do agree. This is our recommendation <laughs> for this week. Go find Quarterback Empire, starring Bengal Denhouse, yeah, yeah. directed by Kate Jensen, 1981. Um, Lucas, what yeah. is your ingestion this week? All right, uh, mine's going to be quick uh, because Christian gave me heroin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow! I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to no. cut. I'm going to cut that. <laughs> That's going to be the clip for the beginning of the episode. <laughs> so basically, I. Uh, uh, I think it was like last episode Christian mentioned a game called Valheim mm -hmm. and I was really interested in it but uh because of the pandemic I haven't worked in a while um so I've been having to be careful with my money and one day I wake up I open my computer and it says uh Christian has gifted you a copy of Valheim yeah. I'm like oh cool thanks I bought it for Lucas at like three o'clock in the morning <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like oh nice that's that's awesome and I started playing it and then I kept playing it. Yeah. Uh, and over the past over the past two weeks, I've played it for sixty nine nice hours. <laughs> um, so it's essentially all I've been doing. That's almost a full time job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And at some point, like I think the first day I had it, uh, uh, I texted Christian to say to say thank you. Um, and then like he's like, I just saw that you're still online. I feel like I feel like I just gave an addict heroin. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. and. This game is so much fun. It is so addicting. It has no right to be as fun as it is, especially no, for a game it... developed by five dudes. Yeah, oh, sorry, five, yeah, sure. five person team. I, I shouldn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, it's it's it's. I think uh, Christian has kind of given the gist of the game, but I'll go over it again real quick. You're a dead Viking. You're kind of like working your way to Valhalla, sort of thing, and you have to uh, explore the world, build things, defeat bosses, and stuff like that. I mostly just build things. Mm -hmm. Um, like yesterday, I literally played it for like 10 hours. I think I ripped down my entire base and rebuilt it from the ground up. And it was, it was a great day. Yeah. It was, it was such a fun day. It's Viking Minecraft. Yeah. 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 Basically. Yeah. 
and uh me and me and christian have been streaming uh arc on mondays and uh this makes me not really want to play arc that much anymore yeah. because the the building mechanics in valheim were ju- are just so much better yeah for anybody one who thing... maybe has tuned in on the arc streams mm-hmm. we're, lucas and i are going to finish breeding raptors and then we're leaving arc we're never going to finish <laughs> arc is a very fun game but the multiplayer is frustrating yeah uh, just because it, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, not at all. <laughs> and uh, the one thing, though, that keeps me coming back to Ark is you can tame and ride dinosaurs, right. which is great. You can't do that in Valheim, unfortunately. Yeah, not yet. Uh, but it's it's a very fun game. It, I, I, it's all I did this in the past two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> aside from uh, the the homework, the assigned homework. For the yeah, show. Aside, uh, aside, and, and of course, uh, Quarterback Empire. But like, yeah. other than that, I didn't really watch anything. <laughs> I mostly just... I'm finding, I'm finding it starting to become a problem when we do start to do these breakdown career breakdowns like they feed up our ingestion yeah they do yeah they do that's they do. that's a, that's a fact yeah that's why we're maybe mm-hmm. gonna take a break off of these for a little while and go into um more less less um guided conversations and more free mm-hmm. conversations as we've had in the past um is that it lucas Ah, yeah, that's that's it. (laughs) (laughs) That all, dude. Um, Okay, so I watched um, four things uh, of note, or at least four things that I would like to talk about. Um, There's a movie on Netflix called Yesterday, starring Jennifer Garner. It is entirely harmless. It is not great. It's not a good movie, but it sounds so. Sounds like every movie Jennifer Garner has been yeah, making these days. Pretty much. It is very harmless. It's basically uh, this family who has the mom and dad used to be free spirits and they used to be like really, really open and you say yes to everything. And then they have kids and then have to start saying no and then become very strict people and kind of no fun, no fun Nancy's. And then they are inspired to have a yes day, which the whole premise of a yes day is you say yes to everything with some guided rules. You can't do things illegal and whatever it's, um, yeah, like I said, totally totally harmless it's it felt like a tv pilot that was shot to be a movie you know like it definitely could have been just a tv show but they just extended it to 90 minutes and we're like mm. yeah fuck it here, here whatever never netflix gave us a million dollars just make a fucking movie I guess. and yeah totally harmless i don't necessarily suggest it but if you just want to put something on that's just noise it's pretty good there's also some fucking cringe that's just Oh, is it better fine. than that uh, really heartwarming, that movie uh, Jennifer Garner tried to do, which was really heartwarming, where the premise was creepy? Uh, what was it? The uh, Odd Life of Timothy Green? Oh, God, yeah. Where they grow a child. <laughs> oh, yeah. that one. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was like that was like uh, that movie specifically. Uh, I don't know why, but like me, my mom, and my grandma went to see it. Mm-hmm. Like, but I, I've right. never... <laughs> Yeah, I've never seen a movie with my grandma, but she wanted to see this this Tim of the Green movie. Like, <laughs> I heard that girl with child. <laughs> it's like fucking. You know, what do you, I, fe- I forget it was. I think it was like the angry video game nerd or something. Who? It's like it's like fucking Chia Child the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on, I watched another thing that was also incredibly harmless, uh, and that was Mighty Ducks Game Changers, which is the Mighty Ducks television series that they're doing for Disney Plus. Again, I entirely harmless. Yeah, I grew up watching the Mighty Ducks movies. It was a big part of my childhood. I don't like hockey, but I like those movies. And my family's we're they're a hockey family, so like, you know, kind of engraved in you. And um it's essentially the Mighty Ducks in twenty twenty one. That's all it is, you know? So basically the premise is uh uh Laura Lai from the Gilmore Girls, Lauren I can't remember her name. Uh, but anyway, she plays the mom and her kid, uh, is on the mighty ducks team and then isn't good enough to keep going. So they kick him off the team. And so he starts his own hockey team and then they go and start the hockey team in this ice rink. And then Gordon Bombay played, still played by Emilio Estevez, uh, shows up and decides to help coach the team and help bring the team back. And, the show is like 44 minutes and it's like, huh, it's still pretty oh, wow. engaging, still pretty entertaining. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to watch this whole goddamn series. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Harmless. Totally harmless. Um, two things that are the exact opposite of harmless. <laughs> One is I watched a movie called Escape from Tomorrow. And it's a feature fe- feature length film that was shot 
entirely in Disney World and Disney. I've World. heard of it. I've heard of it. I, I I saw I saw a video that's like analyzing it. Mm. It's just called Escape from Tomorrow is like a study in misery or something. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> And basically, they shot it at Disneyland and Disney World, predominantly Disney World, without Disney knowing, without Disney having <laughs> any knowledge of them shooting this movie, without having any idea what was going on. And then when it came out, Disney refused to acknowledge it and has never acknowledged it, pre- pretends it doesn't exist, because if, they, <laughs> because if they acknowledge it, they know that it will gain pub- publicity. So they don't even mm. acknowledge, they, don't even, they didn't even sue. They were just like, fuck it, you can have this one. <laughs> um, it's a horror film, kind of. Um, it follows this family. This dad gets fired from his job, and then he starts to have these weird visions while at Disney Disney World, and like a rocky relationship and stuff. And then out of fucking nowhere, there's aliens. And then out of nowhere, there's witches. And then out of nowhere, there's robots. And <laughs> the fuck, it's it went from being like, oh, this is actually pretty intriguing. I I think I kind of like this. To this is fucking hot shit. This is fucking garbage. And it. When was this movie made again? 2015 or maybe even before that um yeah lucas if you want to fact check that for me real quick um right now because yeah. i remember reading about a uh, 2013 i remember back in like 2011 reading about a script on the hollywood blacklist that sounded like a similar uh premise oh maybe I, I know it's probably it's probably not the same thing um but anyway it wasn't good and at first i was like oh i kind of like this and then it stopped being good very quick um because there's out of nowhere there's just this this talk about this thing called like cat flu and okay yeah and then it, it's like going around disney world because a lot of people get the disney sickness or the disney flu when they go to disneyland because there's so many goddamn people right that someone's bound to be sick so when a lot of people families and stuff who don't live in florida or aren't from that area go to the disney parks they come home and a lot of them are sick um which i get was a huge part of the plot but it just ends with, with the dad getting the, the sickness, and then he literally sits on the toilet and shits and pukes himself to death. And then, uh, yeah. uh, yeah, I'm you never watching this movie. You what don't the see hell? it, Liam. You don't see uh. him. But he, he, when he pukes, he pukes up hairballs, and it's really gross. And when he's shitting on the toilet, just excessive. And I was like, come on. Rolled my eyes, started getting to the point where I was finger-banging my phone the whole time. <laughs> um, the last thing I watched was a movie starring Sean William Scott called Bloodline. And uh, Bloodline is a movie where Sean William Scott plays a guidance school counselor where beca- turned serial killer who starts to kill his students' um, ab- abusers. You know, uncles, moms, dads, whatever, what have you. And he's also a newborn father. That's the other side of it, too. Or sorry, a newborn father. He's a, he's, he's a father to a newborn. And, and his kid keeps him up at night a lot and so in that spare time when his kid's awake or when his kid's sleeping he goes out and fucking kills people um the reason why it's called bloodline is because you learn that it kind of runs in the family and whatnot and it's pretty good i really liked it and it but towards the end it kind of lost its thesis and really kind of like fell i wouldn't say flat but just kind of stopped like The whole purpose, you kind of feel like he's going to get caught and then he doesn't, like spoilers, but yeah, he doesn't get caught. And the one saving grace I will say is Sean William Scott can fucking act. (laughs) Yeah, no, uh, I remember hearing about this movie and I was like, and it was one of those things where I'm like, oh, it's a comedic actor trying to do something serious. And I kind of rolled my eyes and then I uh, saw some reviews and were like, actually, it's pretty decent. Yeah, it's pretty okay. And he does a really good job. Um, Some of the kills are incredibly violent. Um, there's also, you know how when you watch like a slasher movie or something that you, there's screams, scream queen, she's running away. No, there's none of that because the way that he kills people is he like stabs them in the neck and then pulls the blade out and you can't scream. They get, it just gurgles and it's hyper violent and some of it, there's a lot of blood it's and it's terrifying. really gross. Um, but well, even good. if they run, even if they run away or whatnot, they'll eventually just choke on their own blood. Yeah. So anyway, two harmless things with two no <laughs> two no movies just two no two no's um so that's the ingestion for this week quick and quick and dirty today boys quick and dirty um do you i know liam you said our recommendation our collective recommendation for this week is quarterback empire starring bangle that yep. from 1981 directed by kate jensen um Pardon me. However, I do have Lucas. Do you have any that you wanted you wanted to mention? Yeah, uh, this one's uh, we, we've talked about uh, this person a lot, but I wanted to recommend Lindsay Ellis's channel right now. 
because she got canceled on Twitter for an extremely stupid reason. Oh, really? And people are just dogpiling her right well, now. What happened? It's... I didn't. So basically, she tweeted saying, I saw Riot in The Last Dragon. And uh, oh, God, I, I, I heard about this. I, I think, and she said, I think we need to come up with a name for the genre that's just like reduxes of uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. Mm -hmm. um, and immediately people are like, oh, so you hate Asian people? And like just started <laughs> dogpiling her, and it's it's extremely stupid. It's it's so dumb. Like there's nothing there to be mad about. She wasn't even talking about the Asian inspired influences. She was talking about story structure. Right. Like it's it it's it's extremely stupid. So go watch her videos because she deserves it. <laughs> she needs the boost. Like, did she get blocked on Twitter? Or like, is she the... she delete she deleted her Twitter account. Ah, that sucks. Yeah. It's stupid. So, William, did you have any recommendations for this week? Uh, no, no. That's fair. Um, I have two things. Uh, one of them is self and both of them are self indulgent, quite frankly. Um, the first thing is, as Lucas mentioned earlier, uh, he and I uh, play Ark on Mondays on our Twitch channel. Um, they're, they also get recorded and they're up on our YouTube channel. So you can go back and watch some of those. Uh, Thunder Lizard Collective at, uh, on YouTube.com and go there, check them out, give us a like, you know, subscribe to us there. Uh, well, you're probably fucking watching it right here. So it's probably in the suggestions. Look, look there. Um, hey. So, yeah, we've been doing that for the past couple of weeks now. Uh, I think we're probably going to switch thing, things up a little bit. Move As we mentioned, move past Arc. Maybe rotate games every couple of weeks. Um, you know, maybe one week we'll play Stardew Valley. Maybe one week we'll play Valheim. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to play a lot of crafting games because I feel like that's what Lucas and I can bond over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the other thing is I started recording a podcast Uh I'm not on the show. Uh, I'm purely the producer and the editor for the show. It is called NOS, which also stands for Not Otherwise Specified. It is a podcast starring Curran Dobbs, Michael McCreary, Pat Tiffin, and Adam Schwartz, who are four uh, comedians in, from Canada who all happen to also have autism. And uh, basically the premise of the show is that they come together every two weeks and interview a com Canadian comedian. Um, talk about their 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 diagnosis and talk about the, the stand-up comedian's uh, work and everything like that. And the first episode actually comes out um, April 2nd, which ha you having seen this will be tomorrow. Because this episode is actually coming out on the first just because we have some things in the works um, for, for, for the rest of the week. So we need to reschedule. So this is actually coming out on the first. Um, but anyway... Yeah, so uh, tomorrow, go, and it's also World Autism Awareness Day tomorrow, so keep that in mind. April is World Aut is, is Autism Awareness Month. Uh, no, Thursday is uh, World Autism Awareness Day, isn't it? Friday. Oh, right. Oh, so this is actually coming out on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, tomorrow, go check it out. Um, NOS on iTunes, Spotify, all that stuff. And yeah, go check it out. It's a lot of fun. This has been the ingestion and the recommendations for this week. Everything is down in the description down below. Uh, make sure you go and check out all this shit. Um, also, if you want to join our Patreon, go to patreon.com slash lizard, and you will be able to get all this stuff a couple days in advance. All right, we're going to go for a break, and we will see you right back. That is true. I've but always still, said like, that. Who the fuck would name a baby Brian? You look at a baby, and you're like, <laughs> Why the f your name's That's Brian. a Brian right there. <laughs> Brian is I a mean, middle aged man. Like, yeah, or like Damian. my uncle Brian. I have a, I also have an uncle Brian. Yeah, but I like mean, it, uh, it works for an adult. Yeah, like yeah, for man. sure. But like imagine like there's there's a child, like a two year old who's running around and you're and you're like, Hey Brian, come over here. <laughs> yeah, I mean most doesn't feel right. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Thunderdome, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Welcome back to the Thundercast. Uh, today, uh, as mentioned at the top of the show, we are going to be talking about writer, director, actor, producer, and screenwriter, all around nut job, and Mel total Gibson, fucking psychopath, Mel Gibson. That's right. Um, if you go to his Wikipedia page, his picture makes him look like he's, he's clinically insane. Um, <laughs> I need to look this it's, up. It's pretty funny. Um, anyway, yeah. Today we're talking about Mel Gibson and uh, specifically Lethal Weapon and Mad Max. Um, and even more specifically, um, yeah, you see it, Lucas? I just saw it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... yeah. <laughs> and even more specifically, Lethal Weapon 1 and 2. We didn't watch 3 and 4 um, or the TV series because Liam informed us that 3 and 4 
it steadily gets worse as they go on. Yeah, and like, uh, yeah, no, they just kind of became very different from what lethal, what made Lethal Weapon work. Yeah, I've heard the TV show is okay though. Yeah, up until the point that the, the one they kill the one guy off. The first two seasons yep. apparently are pretty good, and then Sean William Scott comes in and the show sucks. Um, anyway, Mel Gibson. <laughs> Uh, certified, no I guess we, certified. I guess there's, we, there's a lot to say about this guy. I there guess is. we should start. I guess before we go down the rabbit hole into uh, everything that's wrong with this guy, we should probably talk about what the appeal of Mel Gibson was when he really started off. He looks mm. like he's Australian, but he's actually Irish. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was Scottish. He's, but also American. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what? Sorry, I, just before we get too deep into what Liam was saying. You know what's funny is when you when you get to Thunderdome, the accent is gone. It's not. Oh, it's, really? it's totally. It, he do, doesn't even sound like he's Australian at all anymore. Oh, man. Um, yeah. So what 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 is the appeal of Mel Gibson? Well, for one, well, when he first was when he was first starting out, like Mad Max and all that stuff, the man was handsome. He was a pretty boy. You know, yeah, Mel true. Gibson that was true. considered pretty handsome at his time. Yeah, mm. I mean that mullet, Lucas. You kind of got a Riggs thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the biggest thing, and we learned that this may not have been an act, is what really made Mel Gibson work <laughs> is the fact that he always played people who were just on the edge of completely losing all sanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was one thing. That was one thing I specifically after I watched the Lethal Weapons, I watched. Uh, because I'm like, oh, Riggs is a specific type, a specific character. He's kind of, he's a little bit, a little bit crazy. Mm-hmm. And then I watched the first Mad Max movie. I'm like, oh no, this is just his shtick. This, this is just, just Mel Gibson's thing. This is just Mel Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even um, uh, Wallace is kind of crazy yeah. for what yeah, he does. Yeah. Even, yeah. And William Wallace uh, in Braveheart. Yeah. He he plays him pretty crazy. And also his character in The Patriot is also a little, yeah. little bit off. And in his later years, uh, when he's in Expendables 3, where he plays the villain, he's, uh, mm. well, outside of him being the best part of that movie, he's pretty crazy there. I should, we, that, we, should say, that, we should say that we're yeah. not meaning any offense when we use the word crazy or insane yeah. or anything like that. P- please just stick with us and know I'm, that we're, we're, not, we're not doing cr- it as as an offensive thing. Or well, we're not I'm talking using... about mental illness as a as a negative thing. But yeah, Mel Gibson's fucking crazy. Violent. So, yeah, he's a very yeah. violent man. Liam, typically yeah. when I say somebody typically when I use the term crazy or whatnot I use it in the kind of in the context of what was written in my yearbook towards me from a friend which is you are the craziest motherfucker I've ever met <laughs> <laughs> which is um, Liam in real life that's not really true anymore I remember 17 year old Liam it wasn't far <laughs> off <laughs> um but no I was gonna say uh in the just because I'm gonna kill me if I don't mention myself if I don't mention this in the uh Oh, uh, was it? There's this one scene in Expendables three where, um, essentially, like, uh, they're all making their way through, and he just looks at his, I uh, was at his army or whatnot, and everybody who's working for him, and he's just like, "How hard is it to kill ten men?" <laughs> and he's like, "Observe," and then he just pulls his gun and shoots like five guys in the head, and oh, then he's wow. like, "Yeah, he's the bad, he just, he's the bad guy, right?" Yeah. yeah, and then he's just like, "I'm doing this myself," <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think he would too. <laughs> He, he like he, in Fat Man, he also plays an insane Santa. You yeah, know? like no, he's are, very he's very good at that. Yeah, he's very good at that. Someone who's like someone who's like this close to a psychotic break. Yeah, oh. yeah. Um, on that note, Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon. <laughs> lethal. So weapon. I am so happy I got to rewatch Lethal Weapon because I hadn't seen it in like a good five years. But fuck, I love that movie so much. The first Lethal Weapon is so damn. Good. Hold on. Who am I? Right. Right. Ready. <laughs> Martin Riggs. Uh, sorry for those of you who are listening. I pretended to run like I was a football player, which Mad Max. Or sorry, not Mad Max. Also Mad Max. But every time uh, Mel Gibson would run in those movies, I'd look at, at I'd look at my partner and I'd do the fucking run. <laughs> I look at him go. I was like, you can't catch up to a car. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So where so to dir- start with where to start with Lethal Weapon? Directed by start? Richard uh, Donner. So you guys, you, you guys have given your opinion. This is my first time mm. seeing I, any Lethal Weapon movie. Me too. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Sorry, uh, I thought they were okay. <laughs> okay. I know. There's I got... several things that really bother me, especially about the first one. Uh, but we can get in the, into that a little later. Oh, well, but might as well go into it now. No. Okay, sure. Uh, it includes a lot of tropes that I just don't like. Uh, I don't like the renegade cop trope. I don't like uh, uh, the murder all the henchmen and then uh, have mercy on the boss trope. 
Uh, <laughs> that's Lethal Weapon One. We should say. That, yeah. That does not yeah, happen yeah. in two. <laughs> yeah. Overall, it was overall it was very the, the movies were very fun. It just those those tropes kind of bother me, and I, I don't like them. Yeah. And so that kind of took the movie down a couple pegs for me personally. Um, that's fair. But yeah. I yeah. think overall, um, overall they're pretty good. I think why I love Lethal Weapon as much as I do is it does hit a lot of things from uh I was about are in my sensibilities. Like I love movies about uh two people who can't stand each other that learn how to be friends. Mm. I was or at least have some kind of respect for each other. We've and been play doing off. it for almost ten years, Liam. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love uh movies that like I uh, was it about somebody who's just a, a people who are just completely broken and just like or have a loop the. Uh, what is it at the essentially at the brink of losing every shred of sanity, but then just kind of come, but then kind of overcome it in the end and come back together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And also it has that, uh, what is it? Like I first saw this movie. Uh, I think I saw it as a kid. I uh, was a pretty young, but I revisited it as an adult because uh, I got, be got really into Shane black. Right. And like, this is definitely Shane black's first movie. Yeah. And you yeah, can tell, but sure. In a good way, like mm. the man is talented when it comes to like writing a screenplay. Having said that, it is like Lucas said, it's pretty generic in the grand scheme of things. Like in what we mm-hmm. what we see as a buddy cop movie, what we see as a Shane Black movie, um, it's it hits a lot of notes. You know, yeah. like it is pretty generic in that sense. Um, but there's just something special about the way Mel Gibson plays Martin Riggs. I know, you, Lucas, you were saying you don't like the whole cop on the edge of his seat, you know, rough mm-hmm. around the edges, will risk it all for the woman he loves in a hail of bullets. Uh, <laughs> remember that, Lucas? I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> when we were, in, we were in film school, yep. we had, we had, a, we had yep. a screenwriting teacher who he would like the perfect log line. He would always explain it as a, a cop at the, with nothing left to lose, uh, uh, risks it all for the love of his life in a hail yeah, of bullets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just, he would say that every single time and we always made fun of it. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's kind of, I mean, his wife's already dead, so. Uh, yeah. That's another thing about Mel Gibson uh, in his movies. His wife either always dies or is already dead. Yeah. Or some loved one or what. Yeah. Has something yeah. Has or always, always some woman that like uh, he, he loves or whatever. Yeah, or he has always... sex with a woman and then it... she gets murdered by drowning like moments later. <laughs> he has sex with her six times and then yeah. she gets drowned. So the, the, the movies I was most familiar with Mel Gibson before this were The Patriot and Braveheart. Mm-hmm. And in both of those, in both of those, I can't remember if his wife is killed in, uh, the first Patriot movie, but one of his kids, at least one of his kids is. Hmm. I'm pretty sure uh, I'm a so, Patriot. It's yeah. I know it's his son. Yeah. Yeah. He, he fled his character, but like, oh, it's, it it's always like his, his wife and or child that get killed and motivate him to like do what he has to do for the plot to continue. Like that's, that's just for some reason, very associated with Mel Gibson <laughs> at this point. Yeah. It's, it's strange. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, when I think to, uh, I think uh, rewatching Lethal Weapon, uh, what I really, what really stuck, stuck, like, is again, just like, uh, what is it? Uh, what hits my sensibilities is again, it's a very dialogue driven movie mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where like so much of that movie is just, the, uh, was of a right, uh, was of the writing of the characters and interplay between the two stars. The banter. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have a feeling that uh, if Shane Black directed this, just based on what we know of him as a director now, he probably would have done some things a little differently. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, it's it's funny to think that, Liam, that this movie was directed by Richard Donner, who, mm-hmm. you know, like the Goonies. <laughs> and Superman. <laughs> and Superman, and he made fucking <laughs> Lethal Weapon, where Gary yeah. Busey and Mel Gibson have a totally unrealistic karate fight. In <laughs> 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 Which, yeah, like... I, okay, I, I, I want to mention that scene because it's my favorite scene in the whole movie, for one. And two, no, that would never, <laughs> ever ever happen because <laughs> you have you have Murtaugh just being like no let them find it out oh I shouldn't have done that voice I take that back I apologize but he, he's like yeah no don't 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 step in let them fight you know and I was like all right <laughs> like, I mean maybe okay, like like the way cops deal with cop killers is uh not great it's <laughs> a good point yeah and they they mentioned that too in mm. uh is it the second one say something about cop killers and then, because uh, in the first one, like the Gary, it's Gary Busey who's the villain, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, well, he, he kills. Part, yeah. yeah, he he kills two cops like in like the last like ten minutes of the movie. Right. And then, uh, is it what's 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 the 
Raj Roger is that his character's name? Who? Uh, Riggs and Murta. Oh, Roger, Murta. Yeah, yeah, Murta. yeah Roger Murta. Uh, Danny, Glo- Danny Glover's character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's like, "All right, this guy killed two of our guys. Let let him fight it out." And that was kind of the justification. I just thought it was, it, they kind of just threw it in at the end. Like <laughs> up until this point, they didn't have a justification justification for this really, aside from obviously kidnapping his daughter. Yeah, but like, uh, he's like, "Oh no, he just killed two cops." We can do this now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. All right. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like and, like Liam said, it, it definitely has its has its moments of just Shane Blackness, where where it's just mm-hmm. like, yeah, you, you know, this is very much just like. Also, I, I texted Liam. Um, it is not a Christmas movie. It is a movie set at Christmas. If anyone tries to tell you that Lethal Weapon is a Christmas movie, they can shut up and go home. Well, it's only <laughs> it's Christmassy in the aesthetic mainly. Just be I've talked about this before with uh, Christian, and uh, in fact, uh, Patrick H. Willems has an excellent video on it where he talks about how uh, how was it Shane Black loves to use the Christmas aesthetic as a way to show isolation, right? Mm-hmm. Like in a time when everybody should be together and like with their loved ones, like his characters are always alone. Or like they have something going on holding them back. Uh, was it from like having those meaningful connections with people? And they usually end with uh, the people uh, coming together and enjoying the holidays at the end. <laughs> Quite mm-hmm. literally. Yeah. That's yeah. what happens. Um, well, I mean, we got to talk about Gibson because this is Gibson's yeah. movie pretty much. Uh, oh, this movie has probably one of the most iconic Mel Gibson scenes. Is that where he's crying? Uh, I'm talking about like wife. right after uh, the, uh, was it, the one that everybody t- quotes and talks about from this movie is right after there's like the guy who's about to jump. Mm. And then when he's talking to Murtaugh after about with a bullet and it's oh, like, yeah. and he has it right mm-hmm. to him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's like just about to pull the trigger. <laughs> I was like, wow. And even Danny Glover's like, Oh, you are crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're, you're an insane person. No, thank yeah. you. I don't yeah. know if I want to be partners with you. Um, <laughs> But that's another thing. Danny Glover also puts on a really great performance, and, and he, does. he definitely plays the old man, like who is too tired for this shit or too yeah, old, for, too this old for this shit. Uh, uh, and yeah. does he is that does he say that in every movie? Yeah, at least in one way or another, he says, "I'm getting too old for this shit." Yeah, that kind of became uh, his. Uh, that kind of just became his yippee kaye. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, um, true, yeah. In fact, I actually have a funny story about the whole I'm getting too old for this shit thing. Mm-hmm. So back in 2014, I was uh, at the Calgary Expo and I got to go to a uh, I was a to a uh, I was at an extracurricular panel for the entire uh, I was it for the entire cast of aliens. And uh, occasionally uh, somebody would put up their hands and take questions. But then suddenly uh, there's somebody else, there's an interruption in the middle of a uh, in the middle of one of them talking. And it's from uh, the like the main mascot lady for the Calgary Expo. She's like, "Sorry, we have." W- I was at one question from a very special guest. The camera turns and it's Danny Glover standing there. He's like, "Do you guys ever feel like you're getting too old for this shit?" <laughs> <laughs> what was he doing at the expo? He was uh, he was there as a guest. No, oh, like it. Oh, I don't remember that year. Yeah. That's, wild. that's so that's so fun I, I feel like that's just his job at this point yeah just to say i'm getting too old for this shit he is pretty <laughs> too old for this shit um yeah it, for for a movie that starts off one of the greatest action movie franchises of all time it definitely doesn't really hold back you know it, it mm. and, and i will say that the second one pushes that ante even higher because the second one is I didn't like it as much as the first. The second one is, it's still, I still loved it. I still thought it was great. It's pretty but fun. It, it's just stupid. It's really dumb. Like the, there's the whole, the whole toilet scene when Danny Glover's been sitting on his toilet for 22 hours or something because there's a bomb yeah. behind his toilet and they have to mm-hmm. like bomb proof his house so that they can pull him off the, the seat. And then, but it's yeah. like Riggs and Murtaugh and they're both there and Riggs is like, I'll do it. I'm going to be the one that pulls him off that toilet. And he's just like, we're not dying here. We're not going to die in your bathroom. <laughs> you <know? laughs> they have a really sweet moment there. And, and it's like, no, die. Mm-hmm. I mean, one thing that I, I always kind of hate I, it, in watching these movies in retrospect and having the, the knowledge that there's two more of them and that Danny Glover is in the, the next two movies is like, you know, one of them can't die. So like mm-hmm. when you watch the movie, the, the suspense is kind of gone. Well, that's why, um, well, I, 
Fun fact, that's actually why uh, Shane Black didn't uh, wasn't left of a writing room for this one. Yeah, because the, ever... well, the second movie was supposed to be... Shane Black wrote a draft called um, Play Dirty. Yeah, and uh, it, was but it was going to end with Riggs dying to save Murtaugh. Mm-hmm. Mm. And there's actually and like, there's actually an alternate cut of the movie that exists where where Riggs dies, and uh, okay, and the the final shot of the film when they're pulling out of the the ship that's actually a remnant of that. So in that shot, Riggs is actually dead, um, and they're when mm. they're pulling up, but that they left the shot in because it was a good shot. But you know, it is what it is. And, you know, Black just talked about how. Uh, Apparently, right from when he turned in his first gra- draft, uh, part of why he walked is because when they said he couldn't kill Riggs or whatnot, he was like, ah, so this is just a franchise. Yeah. And that's part of why he left, because he was just, mm. envis- when he was hired to write a sequel, he's like, okay, I'll do one more, and then I'll just go write other things. And yeah. if you watch the other movies, it's kind of a shame that uh, he didn't get his way on that one. Yeah. I know mm. he was also experiencing a lot of turmoil in his own life at that point. He said He's gone on record of saying that he was incredibly depressed while he was writing Play Dirty, um, and everything like that. And um, he also has said that that's one of the greatest things he's ever wrote was was that script for Lethal Weapon 2. Um, there's a lot of differences in the script that, that um, aren't... Well, because aren't... they wanted him to uh, play up the comedy. Yeah. And like uh, when he envisioned this one, like still having, still uh, doing the thing the first one did so well, which is balancing the action and... Or the action, drama, and humor. Mm. Well, apparently, uh, they really wanted to play up the comedy stuff. Yeah, and it shows. The second one is is much more humorous, um, as we mentioned with the toilet scene. You have, uh, but then again, you get to the end, and it's like, oh wow, this is really grim. <laughs> like, <laughs> like when when Riggs and the um, South African woman, you know, they boink six, seven times. Um, and then for a uh, long time, it's a long, they have sex for like multiple hours. Um, (laughs) and then anyway, they get shot up by the other South Africans, uh, who, um, honestly, that's the other thing. What they're trying to smuggle money to South Africa. Correct. Is that the plot of that movie? Basically. I believe so. They're trying to, they've laundered a lot of money and they're trying to get Mm -hmm. it down there. Yeah. Like millions of dollars. Anyway. Um, and Riggs get, but his house gets shot up by them and they got a helicopter and shooting at them. And like, I was like, how, how, one, how did the dog survive? (laughs) No way that that dog is alive. Um, and two, how did they not see him when he got out of the the thing? And how did they not kill her when she was running to the truck? But whatever, suspension of disbelief. So they managed to catch up with them and they put, there's a lot of the, the one thing that I know about Lethal Weapon Two is that there it's it's a callbacks movie, so there's yeah. so much stuff that gets set up in the first act that pays off at the end, which I do appreciate. I always like when movies do that, but like there's a bit at the beginning when Mel Gibson or when Riggs is wearing a straitjacket and he can dislocate his shoulder so that he can get mm-hmm. out of the straitjacket, and it comes back at the end there when they throw him in the water and he's wearing like a burlap sack or whatever and he's trying to get out, um, and then you see that they've drowned. Um, the woman that he was just banging who he barely knew. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, But yeah. And then, then you have the entire final act of the movie, which is violent. It's it's very, very, very violent. I didn't know. Riggs Riggs drops a fucking uh, (laughs) cargo container on a guy. Does not fucking. (laughs) And I was like, you're still a cop for two more movies. (laughs) I mean, in actual, I mean, I hope, I mean, ba- probably not based on my opinion of a police, but anyhow, I hope <laughs> that in a perfect world that somebody like Martin Riggs would be fired out pretty quickly. He should go to jail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he murders people. Yeah, yeah, and and, and, and Murta murders a guy with diplomatic immunity. Like- yeah, which is one thing I, I do appreciate. Um, Lucas is is that this movie doesn't do the villain mercy thing because mm-hmm. he's like, I have diplomatic immunity. <laughs> It's just been revoked. <laughs> <laughs> what a great fucking line. What a great it's a good line. line. Yeah. And uh, I, I didn't realize that that's where the diplomatic immunity like joke that everyone quotes came from. Mm-hmm. Like the way I, for some reason I thought it was from like a James Bond movie or something. Mm, yeah. But like the way he says it is just so silly. <laughs> yeah. Like diplomatic immunity. <laughs> uh, no, like why'd you choose that take? Is that a thing? Without... Is that a, is that a, a real thing? Like, like uh, it's diplomatic a lot... immunity? 
Uh, it's more complicated than yeah. They it, it's very show, complicated. But, yeah, but if you're but, breaking the fucking law, I'm pretty sure they can they can do something about it, right? Yeah, they, no, well, they you, have to like prove it beyond a shadow of doubt. But like, no. I can't remember exactly uh, how it applies. But I think it's exaggerated. In this movie, uh, but... Okay, I'll I'll explain it off the podcast because I do have a working knowledge of a subject. Right on. Okay. Uh, um, but yeah, but uh, lethal lethal weapon also. Uh, it pretty much all the uh, buddy cop things that we joke about or like that everybody remembers just come from the Lethal Weapon movies. Yeah, young, yeah. young, mm-hmm. young cop on the edge of the seat. Uh, you no, know, when he's like, "Do you know what this sign says?" Yeah, I know what that sign says too, and I don't fucking care. <laughs> Angry bosses, <laughs> Angry um, boss, old man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, what do you? Uh, what do you call it? the crazy shootout where uh, then they come back? It's like fuck you guys. It's like what do you? Liam, I, I strongly feel that the nice guys is a spiritual sequel to lethal weapon i think well, a lot even, of people probably said that yeah well that's uh when shane black made the nice guys he said that he had the thing where he's like he's like i can finally do something again like lethal weapon and he had the whole thing he had this whole thing where he's like i could write about these guys for the rest of my life and then nobody saw that movie mm-hmm. yeah which is really unfortunate because it's a good one um yeah th- th- i i don't i'm gonna watch the other two Lethal Weapon movies because I, I had so much fun watching these two, and I know the third one because in the in the second one Joe Pesci shows up and he's just he's just there. Um, yeah, and he annoying. gets pretty annoying as they go. Like he becomes pretty insufferable by the time you get to Lethal Weapon Four. But he's I so- did I did I did like the scene where uh, Murta is like playing the role like he wants to go to South Africa, mm. and and the guy's just like but. You shouldn't go there. <laughs> well, why not? Why, why shouldn't I? And we should mention that this movie takes place during um, apartheid when that was yeah. when that was. Uh, and so there's a lot of and actually the both movies deal with it a little bit because in the mm. first one, there's posters and stuff on on Murtaugh's uh, refrigerator that say stop apartheid. Um, yeah. So it was it was it had it developed over the course of the years when when mm. Lethal Weapon 2 came out. Yep. And so when Lethal Weapon 2 came out, it became a huge it was. It's essentially the plot of the movie is like apartheid and, then, uh, and, and all and everything like that. And then a few years later, uh, we, when as uh, was it, things got went so far that uh, I think it was ninety one when the Rwandan uh, genocides happened, mm. mm-hmm. which uh, was partially due to the apartheid's that were going on in that ish, uh, during those conflicts. Right. Oh yeah. And I uh, just to cut in a little bit, diplomatic immunity. I looked it up. I. Uh, they are not susceptible to lawsuit or prosecution under the host country's laws, but they can be expelled, uh, and the home country of the of the official can waive their immunity if they commit a serious crime. Liam, Rwandan genocide, anyway. and Rwandan genocide was uh, ninety four. Yeah, so a few years after uh, lethal, the Lethal Weapon movies, there was two okay. fact checks right there, back to back. Yeah. We did it ourselves. <laughs> right hey, on. look at us go! Yeah, that's no, great. Uh, but yeah, the Lethal Weapon movies, kind of, yeah, like like y'all said, the original buddy cop movies. Maybe not original, original, but like the ones I think that probably popularized the format. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, they're fun movies. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, and now let's talk about three movies that Lucas didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, one of them I didn't watch. That's that's true, yeah. Um, so, Liam, did you watch, which ones did you watch? Because I know you have a pretty working knowledge of these films, right? Um, so uh, I own the entire uh, thing on the things on Blu-ray. The ones I know the best are um, the original of uh, Road Warrior and uh, Fury Road, but that's just because it came out a few years ago. Did you not watch the movies? I told you had I worked for... You I- son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas and I sat down. We spent hours of our lives watching these fucking movies, and you were just over there finger banging Nathan Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, no worries. I did have of uh, a Road Warrior on while I was cleaning my apartment. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, we're gonna talk about Mad Max, The Road Warrior, and Beyond Thunderdome. Um, we'll start with Mad Max. So Liam and I had the had the opportunity. We went to Seattle in 2013. Is that right? Was yeah, it? this was uh, bef- this, and this was the same weekend, or it was 2015, and it was the same weekend. Uh, Fury Road was coming out, right? And so we watched uh, Mad Max uh, on the way down there because we took a we took a, a Greyhound bus, which I do not fucking suggest anyone never do that. Also, Greyhound is not a thing anymore, so you can do it if you tried. Um, but we watched Mad Max on the bus ride, and even then, I was like, this movie's fucking boring. 
But it's really boring. It's so goddamn <laughs> nothing fucking happens. Yeah, um, like like the whole like it, it's 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 like kind of like a, a, once again a revenge movie as mm-hmm. is very very common with Mel Gibson. Um, but like he has nothing to get revenge for until the movie's almost over. Yeah, yeah. Like most of that movie is just Max hanging out and talking about his feelings with his wife and kids. Yeah, because it, it's not even about Max until like forty mm-hmm. minute, forty five minutes into the movie. You know, yeah. It because it, it, we follow the the guy who ends up burning, and, and Max finds him in the in the hospital there when he's like that guy's not whatever his name is. Um, it's it's it, for a while we're following that guy. And then it just kind of felt like um, George Miller was like, actually, I like that. I like that. Uh, I like that Mel Gibson fella. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go follow him. And so they, they start following him. Like, he's like, I like his performance. Let's use him more. And so they started using Mel Gibson more in the movie. And then it just kind of became a Mad Max movie rather than being a Mad Max movie, you know? Yeah. Um, I will say the opening scene and the final scene of that movie, it is a very great bookend. That mm. the opening is fucking wow. It's that's even just the craft work. that uh George Miller was able to pull off with this for a first movie. Like, because a lot of people, uh, what is it just to remind people is that George Miller is not an educated filmmaker in that, at least in the traditional sense, he was a paramedic before I uh, was oh, before wow. he uh, became a filmmaker. And part of why he wanted to make Mad Max was because he was like, he saw wait one too many car crashes and was like, I'm gonna make a movie about car crashes. And then he did, <laughs> <laughs> and then he just did, and he made four of them. <laughs> Not really. But Thunderdome has jack shit to do with cars, um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, I get, I get why people like this movie. I understand it because it's a cult movie. It's set up a franchise, um, but you can't tell me this is a masterpiece. It's a movie I have a lot of respect for, me in the too. sense of like how it was made, out like on how it was made and how it came to be. But it could have been a short film. Yeah, there's a lot in there. Like the his his wife like gets into trouble, but gets away like four times mm-hmm. before she actually gets killed. And, and you don't it, even it's see like, it happen. I mean, his baby yeah. gets killed too. Yeah, that too, that too. Um, but like I don't know. And then he finally goes on his like rampage to take yeah. them out, which it feels like there's the the first act of this movie is an hour long. The second act doesn't exist. And then there's a half hour third act. Yeah. <laughs> like it's 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 so weirdly structured. Like at least in a traditional sense. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you could find like uh uh like the plot points and everything if you really looked for it, but like it's not traditionally structured. And if you're going into this movie expecting like a traditional Hollywood movie, you're not gonna get it, obviously. Right. Right. Which isn't always a bad thing. But in this movie, it's just boring. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, like, don't get me wrong, I am very tired of the whole a uh, three act structure quota and like yeah. the way we make a lot of movies out here. Uh, so it is kind of refreshing that like, uh, well, I mean, even just that back then, like something like Mad Max got the traction it did and became as popular as it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't, but again, this, you. the best way I could describe the uh, original Mad Max is that it's a movie that I consider it more of a proof of concept than a real movie. I agree. That's fair. That's yeah. totally fair. It, it, I, in one of our, one of our patrons is probably going to shit all over us for this because he really likes the, this franchise. Um, but I, I, I get it. You're, it's character setup. I understand that you're mm-hmm. setting up a character, but there are a million better ways to do that. And also, yeah. when you get to Road Warrior, there is you don't have to have seen Mad Max. There's zero reason for you to have seen it. Yeah, they 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 are they are very loosely connected. It's like Evil mm-hmm. Dead and Evil Dead Two. If you watch Evil Dead Two, you've seen Evil Dead. You you like, you, you know Basically. what happens. Like yeah. you, you get it. You get a fucking gist of it. Yeah. In fact, these movies have a similar structure of a way uh, or the way they follow each other that the Evil Dead movies have. Mm-hmm. Like, what did mm-hmm. Army of Darkness really have to do uh, outside of a setup of uh, Evil Dead Two? What did Fury, Evil Dead? Yeah, what did Fury really have to do? Yeah. Yeah. Or Thunderdome, I guess. Yeah. Because yeah. Th- yeah, Thunderdome has jack shit to do with Mad. It's not even a fuck. I wouldn't even call it a Mad Max movie. We'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. Yeah. Like I. Oh, I'll, I have not. I have yet to like a Mad Max movie that includes Fury Road. Like I, I, I can respect the filmmaking in all these movies, uh, but I have yet to enjoy one of those movies. And I think one of the reasons I kind of had this realization watching uh, uh, Road Warrior, they're deeply pessimistic movies. Yeah, they're yeah. pretty. Uh, they, they have cynical. a very yeah. They have they have a very very low opinion of humans. Yeah, and uh, that, and also they're just yeah, like cynical. Cynical is a really good word, Liam. Um, 
and I don't like that anymore. <laughs> I think I <laughs> like that at, at some point in my life, but like I am no longer cynical about humanity at all. And uh, these movies are just, I, I don't think they actually represent humanity like in a realistic way yeah. at all. They're pretty, they're pretty optimistic towards the underdog and optimistic towards people of, of different abilities and whatnot. Um, mm. But yeah, it, it doesn't like when yeah. you have even, even our, even our hero in road warrior warrior, especially he's not like a hero. He's just the guy we are following. Yeah. Well, like, like in the end, he's he, in the end, he sort of does the right thing, but, but only because he has no other choice. The only reason why like, Mad Max, that only reason why Max comes back is because he got into a car accident and they dragged him back. And he's like, well, fuck, I guess yeah. I have to help. <laughs> George, George yeah. Miller has always been obsessed with this idea of, uh, of like uh, the main or title character or of a person who's your eyes in being the least interesting person. Uh, what is it? Yeah. And like everything else around them being pretty interesting. Yeah. That like goes uh, for Happy Feet. Yeah. Like Happy Feet, like, Nobody really remembers Mumble particularly well as a character. They remember like his. They remember the people he meets along the way. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I understand that. That's what he's going for, and that's fine. I don't really have any complaints about Max as a character. I just, I just have. Uh, I don't like the world. I don't like the the viewpoint it has, and it's just deep. It's it's just deeply unpleasant. It is me. very I mean, unpleasant. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't bother me very much because uh, despite how much I do believe in people to a point, I also have a very cynical view of them yeah. <laughs> and of humanity. Um, so I think we've exhausted our conversation on the first Mad Max. So we, Lucas kind of already gave us the segue. We might as well start talking about Road Warrior. There we go. Um, I think Road Warrior is the best Mad Max movie. Um, it is better than Fury Road, and I like Fury Road a lot. It is significantly better <laughs> it is because one thing that i was I've, I've, I've mentioned before is that all the mad max movies are the same fucking movie except mm -hmm. for some of road warrior or sorry some of of thunderdome but they're all the same like yeah, they kind of except, follow and, the same and also structure. the first one like the first one is just no but yeah like liam said the same structure essentially the same story because the story is max comes to town helps the guys out leaves it's it's a western. It's a yeah. samurai film. It's your classic like lone wolf and cub kind of story, right? Mm -hmm. Like man comes in, helps, leaves. <laughs> That's it. And yeah. I don't know if I use the lone wolf, lone wolf and cub example correctly, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, that, I think you're. I think I think so. Yeah. Uh, oh. But yeah, I I also think that's another reason I didn't really like. I'm tired. I don't really like the lone wolf thing anymore mm, that's and i'm just kind of tired of that as well I've, my but. frustrations with the lone wolf thing mainly come from the fact that like verse we get a number of things that do it really damn well but like uh everybody's kind of like the way everybody tried to recapture the dark knight they took all the wrong notes from it yeah and they're just like i uh, was and it's just like one of those things where we got so oversaturated on it Mm -hmm. yeah for sure. sure yeah and everybody just trying to do the same thing where i'm like no you got to do different things guys yeah yeah, um, so I, I really, I, I also am pretty, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I, I like the found family trope, which is like directly opposite of the lone wolf trope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Which I guess kind of exists in Fury Road to well, some, yeah, some I, degree. I, I, I actually, your Fury, Fury Road is probably my favorite of the Mad Max movies. I feel <laughs> you don't like, like it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I feel like uh, the best way I could describe the found family thing is that it's between like uh, the team player and the lone wolf. And mm. I think that's why, uh, like Lucas, it's my favorite. Like I like movies about found family, mm -hmm. and like I like that story. That's why I, like, I liked the Lone left. Wolf. <laughs> yeah, I liked the Lone Wolf a lot more when I was younger, probably because I was a bit of an outsider. But the older I've gotten, I'm like, uh, I enjoy it at times. But I feel like just again the fact that, especially out here and in the West, like we seem, everybody seems to think that just being the Lone Wolf is the coolest fucking thing on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, Road Warrior. Uh, so part of why I enjoyed it so much was because unlike Fury Road, there's actually a story. Um, yeah. It's not just mm -hmm. like an excessively long car chase scene. Um, you can argue that there are things that happen in Fury Road that develop the character more, but it's not really a mo. It's an action movie in the highest definition. Um, mm hmm Road Warrior is also a action movie, but like I was saying mm. earlier, you could have not have seen the first Mad Max. That's why it doesn't. Even, it's not even called Mad Max Two: Road Warrior. 
in 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 you in the U.S. It's just called the Road Warrior. When you buy it on DVD, when you buy it on Blu-ray, it just says the Road Warrior. It's okay. no common knowledge that it's Mad Max Two, the Road mm-hmm. Warrior. Um, a few other things, you can tell they had a budget. Yep, <laughs> you can tell they had money, and also yeah. you could tell that that Mel G- not Mel Gibson, that George Miller was like, I'm gonna make it so none of these movies are connected at all. <laughs> um, and Which, this to be is, honest, I kind of wish more move. I wish more franchises would do things like that. I don't disagree. So my, I, do, I, I do disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I am so tired of everybody just only do. Oh, was it of just doing things in service of making the universe bigger? Well, I'm like, I, I would. I mean, that's that, that, that is fair. That's that's a downfall of the interconnectedness uh, of of cinema, cinematic universes and some TV shows and stuff. I just get very bored if if like it's, if it's just the same thing. I don't like episodic story structure. That's fair. I just find it very boring because it's just, it feels like the same thing is just happening over and over and over again and nobody ever learns anything. Right. But hey, yeah. Lucas, do you like playing Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> I do like playing Dungeons. You like world building. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just. I just think a lot of it comes from growing. Uh, was it from like uh, growing up in the era that I have with like, uh, mm. like with uh, everybody just trying to do like big grand scale universes or whatnot? Where I'm like, just give me like simple one off character pieces or whatnot yeah. or like so, uh, event pieces. What I'm trying to say is one thing that I really appreciate about the structure of the Mad Max universe is that it, and I appreciate that they're not connected, is because it feels like it's just folklore. It's it's mm. campfire stories that each movie is a new story for this mythical creature, this mythical character who maybe doesn't exist. You know, they just attach a name to him, um, attach a name such as Mad Max or Max Rocktensky, um, as a way to give hope. You know, you know, have an idol. Very similar to what happens at the end of Thunderdome, Liam, with uh, the Lost Boys, right? Yeah, and you uh, we'll get into it in a minute, Lucas. Uh, but with the Lost Boys and, and the Captain Marvin or Captain whatever his name is, um, how they needed something to believe in, and so they found something to believe in, and that's why I like um, Road Warrior because it's it's like oh, okay, we're kicking it up a notch. <laughs> like that this this is now the beginning of the unbelievable. Um, of there's no way any of this shit is real, but it's real and for them, it's real for their universe. You know, and it's real for the for the things that are happening to them. Um, that's when you get start to get things in the Mad Max universe, like calling it guzzoline and, and you know, referring and having people who's who's talks like this, you know, who talk like Gollum all the time, and you have a, a little feral child who just grrrs, you no, know, and like doesn't yeah. really. Say I kind I kind of hated the feral child, but I had a feeling you well, you don't like kids. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like the feral child enough. Um, and I do, I like how at the end it's revealed that the feral child, this movie is fucking 20, 35 years old. I didn't mention spoiler. Um, is that he, you know, is our narrator and that mm-hmm. he's explained, you know, this, is, which also makes it unreliable, which adds to the whole yeah. uh, idea that this is not a real story, you know, because you were a feral child. <laughs> like, <laughs> you couldn't even, you couldn't talk. You didn't know what was going on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You were throwing a razor sharp boomerang. Which like, <laughs> okay, we got to talk. I love the violence in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> George Miller knows how to shoot mayhem like nobody's business. Boy, that is there. true. Yeah, and oh, you. I love the way that this movie just opens with that car chase scene and then ends with that epic fucking car chase scene. Just <laughs> one of the best things I've seen ever put on film. Personally speaking. I was just, I was outstanded. I was just like, this is so tight, you know? And then you get to like Thunderdome and it's like, oh, you didn't earn this. You did not earn this. Uh, like, yeah. Um, anyway, I've said a lot about Road Warrior because it's my new favorite Mad Max movie. Liam, what do you got to say about Road Warrior? Uh, I feel like, I'm trying to think of how to explain it. So I've flip-flopped between uh, what I like more, uh, Fury Road or... Uh, uh, what is it, or of a road warrior? I think I lean a little bit more towards uh, Fury Road because it was my Mad Max movie. Yeah, and also I feel like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like with Fury Road, it's also the fact that like that movie manages to be not subtle but also very nuanced. Yeah, and I feel like this one is just like, uh, like it's uh, one of the great action movies of the uh, '80s. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it like in the sense of it just being a pure action pitcher? And he was, it's um, funny because like Gibson went from this to lethal weapon. Like, yeah. There's very little <laughs> break there. Um, I also uh, like just because uh, I know you disagree, Lucas, but uh, what is it? But like, I like it when your main, when there's min- with the minimal dialogue. As much as I love like great banter and uh, witty dialogue, I like it when I also do have a soft spot for when there's not a whole lot and you just visually tell the story. Like I, I, uh, I, I, I can, there's definitely movies like that that I enjoy, but sometimes it feels like that's what they're going for and they don't achieve it. I'm not saying this movie specifically. That's just uh, though. I think especially in the first one, I think that is a, one of the flaws of it. Yeah. But I yeah. think it also might be the fact that like so many is that again with so many. Why the Mad Max movies have always stuck out to me is because they don't they don't just try to do what everybody else is doing and they get renowned and they I was in love I wasn't loved in spite of that like I'm really tired of uh, what is it like why I like to go back to them is I'm really tired of joke quotas in movies mm-hmm. I'm really mm-hmm. tired of everybody just uh like falling asleep on the keyboard and saying like this is banter or like <laughs> just trying to make you laugh every few minutes I uh, was it like this yeah, movie so I'm many people. Sure- yeah, so many people trying to em- emulate people like Joss Whedon or, to an extent, Quentin Tarantino. Or Shane Black or, like, mm-hmm. uh, hell, even uh, Kevin Smith. Or like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'm yeah. just really, and especially given that, like, uh, right now where we live in a, uh, a, was it a cinematic climate where everybody's just trying to do the same thing, I kind of admire things like, uh, was it, The Road Warrior, that we'd have more variety and go back to things like that. Yeah, and and to, to piggyback on that a little bit, that is not the fault of filmmakers. That is the fault of studios. Oh yeah, like, no, it's, that, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna talk shit. Like, because I have a feeling that a lot of these studio films we'd see, we see, would be pretty different if, uh, what is it? But people making them were more so at the helm, oh, yeah. and we didn't have like films made by committee or marketing agents. Yeah, like when when people say there's no originality left in Hollywood, that is not true. Yeah, there are plenty of extremely talented filmmakers and writers and actors out there, but. Uh, Ultimately, the film industry is is an industry. It's it's about making profit, uh, uh, and or at least that's what that's what and, it's been for a very long time. And we've also, uh, with but the yeah. role of the 2010s, we've lived in an age where movies are making mon- more money than ever over the past yeah. ten years. Why it's called yeah, show and, and like, business, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, and I, like I, the 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 middle budget mo- uh, movie has disappeared. Mm-hmm. Those things don't exist anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's either small budget or fucking poles. enormous budget yeah and and like the the way the way uh the industry has been structured uh is not friendly to original movies yeah yeah like uh um but what i, w- I was gonna say with like the whole uh dialogue thing in this movie or whatnot like there's not a lot of talking mm-hmm. uh, i was it like i'm pretty sure no, not yeah really. like max only had i'm pretty sure of account is max only has like 17 lines something like that yeah yeah, he oh, does wow. not have a lot to say, and I do, and I, again, maybe it's just me, or was it just being so burnt out with the way uh, modern Hollywood is, but, like, uh, just with the way it is, it's really made me appreciate things like Mad Max more, mm-hmm. or just, like, uh, more, like, uh, different, unique, kind of more underground movies that gain traction, and I think the Road Warriors of, and uh, the Mad Max movies as a whole are just very special films for that. Yeah, I don't agree, with, I don't disagree with you. Um. Okay. Beyond Thunderdome. And, All right, so, I have nothing to say because I didn't. I, I, I couldn't bring myself to Lucas, watch it. <laughs> you would fucking hate it. <laughs> Thunderdome is an interesting movie because from what so that movie got passed around a lot. Um, in fact, to a point where I'm pretty sure there are elements of a Peter Pan script that got worked into it. Yeah, that was being tossed around. Okay, the and fuck? oh, it's it and it's fucking weird how it happened. So basically, the plot of Thunderdome is Max is okay. Here's another thing that pissed me off about Thunderdome was it's a Mad Max movie. You just made two movies that have excessive vehicle violence and you start the movie by having Max on a car being pulled by camels. I was like, no, not a good, not a, not a good start. <laughs> and then he, no, he arrives at weird. a place called Barter Town, um, which is this whole section of the film actually is, t- is fine. The Thunderdome part is pretty great. Um, and basically, he shows up in, in Barter Town, meets Tina Turner, um, who's, whose name's the aunt. Is that right, Liam? Uh, uh, hold on, let me pull whatever. it up. And she's like, hey, you got to help us with this problem. 
Um, basically, there's a character characters named Master Blaster, and Master is a little person um, who rides on the back of a character named Blaster, who is a massive brute. Everybody remembers this movie for Master Blaster. <laughs> Master Blaster. I, I just feel like I just feel like I've met somebody online who calls himself like Master Blaster sixty nine or something like that. I'm guaranteed, <laughs> or Finger Blaster sixty nine. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, and they're like, hey, and part of the reason why they try to get Max to help there is because the town is run by pig shit, which is a good little section. They, they make this joke about pig shit, and they, they repeat it over. It's very funny. Anyway, um, the town is rough, run off of methane um, from the pig shit, and the only person who knows how to make the methane is Master. And so, the, but Master won't help because he runs Barter Town. And Tina Turner's like, no, I want to run Barter Town. And so they're like, okay, well, we have this thing called the Thunderdome. Two men enter, one man leave. So, and the Thunderdome is just this big dome <laughs> in the middle. No, of, it just is really big. It's just this big cage, essentially. It's just a cage. <laughs> yeah. And then they put two men in, and it's to the death. It's a fight to the death. And part of it is that they, they have weapons hanging from the roof and things like that. And then, I didn't know this, Liam. They string you into like these bouncy cords and you like yeah. fly around the room. Yeah, you're essentially on bungee <laughs> cords. And I was like, oh, okay, we see Peter Pan now because old Mad, yeah. Mad Max can fly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's flying around the room and he's fighting Blaster. And it gets to a point where you find out that Blaster, because Max manages to take off Blaster's hel- helmet, you find out Blaster has Down syndrome. And that. Max is like, I can't fucking, no. <laughs> he's got the mind of, he, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's got the mind of a child, according to Master. Um, mm-hmm. And so, which also, Liam, that effect with that when they have Blaster in the suit and it's very obviously just a rubber suit and they, yeah. just, they just have, the way they shoot it, they just have the guy's head kind of like out of it. It looks wrong. Um, but anyway, you uh, they He's not able. To, he Max is like, I don't want. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to kill him. Um, and then they end up. The people end up killing Blaster, and Master's all upset about it. And Max gets because he didn't do the time. He didn't do the. He didn't finish the game. Uh-huh. <laughs> he, he's got to spin this big old wheel <laughs> that has all the punishments on it, which again is also just fucking stupid. Um, it's like uh, in a. Fuck a fuck. Even Avatar took from it. Where like I was, uh, I was just about to say that there's a wheel episode. of punishments in Avatar: Last Airbender. At some yeah, point. and it's oh, and it's things like uh, boiled in oil or yeah. um, community um, service. There's just a <laughs> lot of uh, really of, of not pleasant things. Yeah, um, yeah. Max gets gulag, which is not what it. He gets exiled. Mm. Um, so they put him on the back of a horse. They put a bag on his head, they give him some water, and they smack the horse in the ass and make it run out of town. That's um, the opposite of what a gulag is. Yeah. Know, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> while he's out there, um, he gets rescued by a gang of ragamuffins who are the Lost Boys. It is Peter Pan. Um, they think that he is a pilot who crashed an airplane um, and saved everybody's lives. He's not that guy. Uh, and anyway... This is where it starts to just fall apart. It's just like, what the fuck is this movie now? It's the longest Mad Max movie, too. It's an hour and 45 minutes. This movie is also directed by two people, and it shows. You can mm. tell. Because you can tell the Thunderdome stuff. That's George Miller. And you can tell the other stuff. It's the other guy, because he's a theater director. He's not a movie director. Mm. And it shows. It, it, it's there. Anyway, he goes, and he gets rescued by these people. The Lost Boys. They he really wanted to direct a stage version of Peter Pan. Yeah, and then he wasn't yeah. allowed. Yeah. Anyway, he gets saved. Then half of the group is like, hey, we want to stick here. It's cool. And then the other group is like, we have to go to tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow land. Tomorrow, morrow land is what they call it. And they don't, <laughs> they don't talk dumb. <laughs> anyway. You have a kids when the kids show up in that movie. And this is coming from a guy who doesn't have a problem with kids. The movie really starts to get grating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And they run away. Half the team runs away. And Max is like, fine, I'll go get them. So he goes, and then they get, they realize that they're halfway to Barter Town. And this is when Max is like, oh, right. <laughs> Let's go steal Master. For <laughs> no, and it's not explained. It's not explained why he just could have fucked off and left, never gone back to Barter Town. 
everything would have been fine. <laughs> and he goes and he and he goes and rescues Master along with this character named Pig Killer. Is that right, mm-hmm. Liam? Uh, yeah, yeah. Who the only reason why he's called that is because he killed a pig, Lucas. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was creative. Clear. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but he and he's like serving life in the pig farm because he killed mm. a pig. Um. Anyway, they then there's a train. They pull out of the thing, and they're driving a train out. Um, and basically that's when the car chase scene happens. And I was like, yeah, again, he didn't earn this. Anyway, that's Christian explaining the plot of Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. <laughs> Why it's not good. <laughs> I think I've explained it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely the least of a Mad Max movies, though. It's also interesting because it's kind of like Army of Darkness in the sense where people quote it the most, probably because it has the most dialogue. Uh, yeah, Max has a lot of lines. Max yeah. talks a lot, which is not right. <laughs> yeah, like you'll ask, like if you ask Mad Max fans to like quote something, they'll be like, oh, a uh, Master Blaster or. Uh... <laughs> But that's just uh, a character. Like I think, yeah. um, like the line Liam when 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 in the first Mad Max when he's just like, um, "I am the Night Rider," <laughs> you know, the Night Rider. Yeah, it's like th- that part's pretty great. Um, and I even told Tanya like that. That's been in so many songs. Yeah. Like that line. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. the Night Rider. I run shiny with chrome. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um. Yeah, and then it just anyway. Thunder, uh, Thunderdome, yeah, I, I, I don't, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. And this is coming from a guy who didn't like Mad Max. So like in my, in my rating system, it goes Road Warrior, Fury Road, Mad Max, Thunderdome. Mm. Yeah, Thunderdome's at the bottom fucking tier. And like, uh, sorry, I've been rambling about it. I'll, I'll let Liam, I'll let Liam, I'll let Liam cover Thunderdome. Uh, I mean, I don't really have much else to say about it. Okay. Pretty much Christian said what everybody says about that movie and. That's really all I got as well. Yeah. The stuff in the Thunderdome, pretty cool. But mostly just because it's a very well choreographed scene. Mm. Pretty well shot. Um, it's It flows really well. Like, it's really dumb. <laughs> it's exceptionally stupid. Um, oh, the other thing, too, that I forgot to mention is at the beginning of the movie, part of the reason why Max goes to Bartertown is because his car gets or his cart gets stolen by this guy flying an airplane. So he comes in, him and his son steal the cart and then drive it off to barter town. Um, and so Mark, M- Max thinks that's where his shit is. Did you just almost call him? Was it Max Mark? I almost did. And also Mad Max has a <laughs> monkey in this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why he's a pet monkey, but he's got a pet monkey. Right. Um, yeah. Cause they, they killed his dog in, thund- in not Thunderdome in uh road warrior. Right. Beautiful dog. Yeah. Yeah. I love dog. that. I love blue healers and that dog is, Oh, chef's oh, kiss. Yeah. It's a great dog. Oh. <laughs> uh, probably the best actor in that whole movie. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, so at the end of the movie, after they deal with the car chase scene and you know, everybody dies and or fucks off, they uh, get to a, uh, the air, they find the airplane guy again, which is just like it's a useless day as Machina. Just useless. And anyway, but useless in the sense that it was like, really? Like, they couldn't have just ran away? Um, but they get in the airplane, and then they fly off to, to Tomorrow Morrowland, which is just Sydney. And Sydney has been ravaged by the apocalypse, as they call that, or Spocalypse, or whatever the fuck they call it. Because that, that, that's when they start to talk like they're all brain dead. Um, is in this movie. Um, but... Yeah, Sydney's ravaged, and they build a new new city in Sydney, and then like the Lost Boys or whatever tell the story of Max, and that's what I'm like. Okay, again, this just um, supports my idea of these movies just being folklore. Sorry, I've been rambling for 20 minutes about Mad Max Thunderdome and how I don't <laughs> like it. And I apologize. I apologize. So should we, given we've gone through all of them now, and that, and since. Uh, he didn't come back for, um, uh, was it for Fury Road? Should we just close it off and just talk about, uh, was it our final notes on Mel Gibson? Yes, we should talk mm-hmm. about our final notes on Mel Gibson. So Mel Gibson's also a director. Um, mm-hmm. He directed. And he's pretty effective at it, all things considered. Uh, the Man Without a Face, Braveheart, um, The Passion of the Christ, Apocalypto, and Hexaw Ridge. Um, mm-hmm. Those are the movies. Right. Yeah, which and... I have seen. Braveheart, and I saw it when I was like 13, so I don't remember a goddamn fucking thing about it. And I like I liked Braveheart fine. I haven't seen it since high school. Um, what do you call it? Hacksaw Ridge was a pretty decent flick. Mm-hmm. 
Well, nominated for an Oscar. It's kind of the reason. Yeah, it, it's kind of the reason why it brought back Mel Gibson. That's why people are mm-hmm. actually paying attention to him because he was a raging alcoholic and a fucking racist for years. Probably yeah, still is, yeah, but <laughs> probably. Um, yeah, because he he's got a lot of controversy. Like he, yep. yeah. What was it in ninety one? He, he did an interview uh, with L. Paris, um, where he made derogatory comments about homosexuals. Um, so Glad came after him. Um, he uh, he was, said was, one, was, it, was, it, was there some anti Semitic comments or am I thinking yep, of someone else? When okay. he got yeah. when he got arrested, mm-hmm. um, or he got pulled over at least. Uh, there were some things. Uh, his girlfriend at the time recorded um, recorded some of his rants. Yeah, one and like in which she, said. she was sexually assaulted by the N words. Uh, yeah, and uh, he said uh, something. He said one thing where uh, I don't even know how it could compute of a human mind to say that, which I am not going to repeat. Let's not repeat yeah. it off the show. Uh, I I remember I remember when I was like a kid. I think um, I remember hearing like like those tapes got leaked, and that was like the first time I really like understood who Mel Gibson was. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'd seen any Mel Gibson movies what at that terrible, point. What a terrible introduction to the man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just hear all these horrible things he's saying. I'm like, who's this guy? He's in movies. <laughs> oh, John Smith. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, Alan Smithy. Yeah. The, the man has had quite a career. Let's face it. Um, it's, it's funny to look back at, at all the, the things that he's done and, things that he said and and whatnot and and still be able to have a comeback you know somehow it's it's, out, it's amazing that people are like oh yeah no this we're gonna let we're uh, even we're fucking talking about matt mel gibson right now i think part of that was because yeah. i just wanted to watch mel, mad max but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah like it, it just yeah i don't know i i i i've only seen braveheart that's the only mad uh uh mel gibson directed film i've ever seen Liam. Yeah, not a, not a badly made movie, but you guys know that uh, uh, Braveheart kind of drives me crazy. That's but, right. You know, <laughs> if you want to see, mess. yeah, go go to Lucas's YouTube channel, History of Bridge, and watch the. Uh... <laughs> and uh, the Passion of a Christ is on my list of movies I hate. Oh really? Mm. Yeah, it's never terrible. never seen it. Uh, it's literally just a movie that it's lit. As uh, Stan Marsh once said, that wasn't a movie. That was a snuff film. Yeah, it's Jesus torture <laughs> porn, isn't it? <laughs> Because I mean, it is Jesus it Christ. is the passion, and let's face it, the passion mm-hmm. is was not cool. Like it, it was pretty pretty violent. All things I'll, considered, I'll, I'll, hot, hot take here: they shouldn't have crucified Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> a bad idea. <laughs> hot take, yeah, it's a very hot take. <laughs> Man, what a Judas! <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyway, uh, yeah, Mel Gibson uh, should stop having dead wives. Um, I don't, I don't think movies. he has any in movies. in movies. I don't, I don't think he's had dead wives in real life. Uh, I hope uh, not. Anyway, he's had he's had one wife, Robin Moore, and then he's mm. been in. He was with a woman named um, Oksana Grig- Grigriva for one year, and then he's with a woman named Rosalind Ross. He's been since 2014. Mm. He has nine fucking kids. I saw that yeah. uh, on the Wikipedia on the Wikipedia page. Uh, it says children nine, including Milo. I don't know who Milo is, but I just thought that was a funny way to phrase that. Milo. <laughs> is his son Milo Yiannopoulos? No, his name is Milo, his name is Milo Gibson. Uh, I hope not. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if uh, actually now that yeah. Uh, he actually he played Al Capone in a movie called Gangsterland. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, Mel- Milo oh. Gibson. No, now we've just reached a point where we're uncomfortable talking about Mel Gibson. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, I mean, I have a feeling we're going to have uh, some more episodes like this the more we break down controversial stars. <laughs> oh, man. I, should, did we tell people who were? Yeah, we did on our last episode. Next up on our, we actually rearranged some stuff and took some things out. Um, so our next uh, movie, our next action movie star is going to be Bruce Lee. Bruce yeah, Lee. which should be fun because I haven't seen a Bruce Lee movie since I was like twelve. Mm-hmm. I'm quite. I don't excited. think I've ever seen a Bruce Lee movie. I can't wait to watch a martial arts yeah. action movie. Um, and then we're going to be talking about uh, Steven Siegel. Um, Steven Siegel. Steven Siegel. Uh, yes, that's intentional, and yes, that is yeah. what his name will be referred referred to as throughout the entirety that's, of. That's the just movie. his name. That's just. His, yep. And why is that his name? 
because he's be- why because he's a seagull. far better seagull than he is an actor or martial artist <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i've ever seen a steven seagull movie either i there's so many movies i just haven't seen i am what not excited fuck? but we're doing it anyway this is what we do for you <laughs> this is what we do for you the audience <laughs> what we do for you yeah this is what Hope we do for all five it. of you <laughs> um, it's not an excuse to hang out at all no <laughs> yeah, that, that too. yeah and um after that is arnold schwarzenegger i believe is that right mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i was I believe so yeah so get get stoked get stoked. seen a lot of arnold movies oh yes. yeah i think arnold's gonna be fun arnold's gonna be fun. i'm probably also I'll a controversial even... figure <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I, I genuinely, I, I'm, I'm excited for that one. I want to watch some more Arnold movies again. Yeah. And I think when we get to Arnold, because there's so many of them, I think what we'll do there is we'll each want to watch a different set of, of mm, Arnie movies. Okay. Yeah, because there's more Arnold. We all, we all have there. to watch Commando. Oh yeah, I mean that. Oh shit! Yeah, we'll, I was we'll gonna say, Commando damn, I'm watching together. Commando again. <laughs> <laughs> no, Commando will be the unifying. I think that might be my favorite Schwarzenegger movie, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. But. Um, Dibs Jingle All the Way. No. <laughs> 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 Not an action movie. <laughs> Daryl Down. <laughs> okay. I'll watch Last Action Hero just for Charles Dance. You go ahead. <laughs> I, I tried to watch that movie once and didn't like it. Um, <laughs> Hello. I've just shot somebody. <laughs> I did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Thank you, everybody, for listening to us, for listening to me talk about fucking Beyond Thorne. Um This has been our conversation about Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> Again, just wanted to put that there for uh, suspense. Um, hey, Liam and Lucas, what's coming up next on the show? Cool Wars. That's right. We're going to be doing another edition of Cool Wars, and we will be right back. We're such fucking nerds. And okay. you guys no, that's, just... that's, that's bullshit. On the bright side, the ship that was blocking the Suez Canal got free. That's right. <laughs> uh, did Liam, I sent Liam this picture, but it's just like, uh, it's the ship, and <laughs> it's like, oh no, I'm stuck. And then you see an excavator behind it. It's like, what are you doing, skep- step excavator? <laughs> <laughs> I saw, really, I saw one that was really, I saw one that was really stupid of uh, uh, Putin on a bear pulling the, bu- uh, was it pulling the ship <laughs> by a chain? <laughs> what are you doing? For something that's. Matter? All right, welcome back to the Thundercast. I'm not doing the silly voices anymore. We're just back to regular me, old me. Um, so here we are, Thundercast, uh, episode 54, I believe. Mel Gibson, uh, today. We are doing another fantastic and fun edition of Cool Wars. Cool Wars. Cool Wars is a game we like to play at the end of every single episode of the Thundercast in which Liam, Lucas, and I go off of a list that is entirely arbitrary and made by us where we pit two characters up against each other in a battle of coolness. Coolness is uh, evaluated based off of the definition Z of cool. Uh, cool can mean a number of things, so feel free to go Google that yourself. Uh, one other thing, these people are not fist fighting. There is no physical fighting between these people. It is purely a battle of cool. Liam, who do we have on the docket today? Uh, today we have a very interesting matchup. I uh, was at one fitting with the theme of the episode and the other is arbitrary. <laughs> Those are uh, uh, Mad Max or Max Rokitansky uh, versus uh, Eleven from Stranger Things. <laughs> a grown man versus a child. <laughs> I think in the first one she's like twelve or something. Yeah, <laughs> she does have psychic powers though. So. Yes, that is true. No, that is true. Right. And I mean, Max is pretty okay. Yeah, sorry, we should yeah right. hold that. Liam, uh, right. eight minutes on the clock there, please. Uh, yes. And three, two, one, go. You usually say "Let's jam," um, <laughs> and you you even have a bebop shirt on today. I noticed that. Um, <laughs> nice. Yeah. So. Uh, as mentioned, this is a grown man fighting a child. Um, <laughs> no, 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 they're, not they're not physically they're not fighting. fighting. True. I forgot. I forgot my Listen, own fucking rule. He just said that. <laughs> um, so Max is essentially an immortal apocalypse being. I think some of the radiation definitely gave him some fucking powers or something. There's no way... Um, oh, you know something I realized, sorry, just a, a sidebar, is that Max doesn't have the silver in his hair in Fury Road. Hey? Eh? 
Yeah. Hmm. There's a little bit a little thing to notice. Um, which makes me believe that they're not in the same universe. Uh, they're not in the same <laughs> storyline. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, Max is essentially a immortal um, apocalypse god who is, you know, a cowboy. He likes to wander into town and help people, which is pretty cool. You know, he, he helps people, even though he does it it's begrudgingly. It's always begrudgingly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He never wants to. Yeah, he never wants to do it. Um, <laughs> Eleven is a 12-year-old um, individual with um, telekinesis, among other yeah, things. Basically. Yeah, basically. Yep. M- mostly telekinesis. Um. <laughs> <laughs> can somebody give me a little sometimes. bit? Yeah, can somebody give me a little bit more? Because I've only seen like the first sure. four episodes. So, uh, Eleven is basically a child who was experimented on in a mysterious government facility, uh, and and kind of uh, either given psychic powers or she was experimented on because of her psychic powers. I can't remember. Uh, I believe they unlocked them. Unlocked them. Yeah. Okay. Like that, like that. Uh, and she has this weird connection to a place called the Upside Down. Um, where uh, it's like uh, in a D&D uh, sense it's like the Shadowfell or the Feywild where it's like a parallel universe uh, but like different it, it's it, the the ecology is essentially kind of different um, she's able to kind of open portals and open and close portals to that universe and uh, has, has some sort of connection to that sort of plane um, and she basically over the course of the story uh she learns to trust people and she learns to make friends essentially um, rediscovering her childhood yeah yeah exactly and one time at one time she throws a van over her head and yep. it's cool <laughs> she did flip a van <laughs> doesn't every single boy in that show have a crush on her uh, uh not really no like, two of them don't really care Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, Will Will just wants to play D anD D, and I relate to yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, reasonable. Uh, and uh, uh, douchey little Fim Wolfheart is the one who has the hots for the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Millie Bobby Brown is pretty damn talented. Um, she is, especially mm-hmm. for a twelve-year-old child in the first yeah, season. I think she I think she's like what is she now like 16 or something? Yeah, yeah, she's older right. now but like yeah. uh, as, well, as, and especially given Stranger Things was like the first thing she had ever done. It's a pretty impressive performance. I would it like is. to say that the fact that none of us knew how old Millie Bobby Brown was proves that we're not creeps. So <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Yeah. And that was not something I wanted to Google. <laughs> so, we have a uh, uh so we ha- uh, was it? We essentially have a child rediscovering her youth and childhood, and we have a uh, angry, crazy man discovering his trying to discover his humanity, and just his in humanity in general. But yeah. the, the thing with Max is that I don't even think he really wants to. I, I, I think no, it's so far so it's, he's so far gone in the feral dog like mindset. Yeah, I think I think in Fury Road is the closest he comes to regaining his humanity, and that's yeah. not again that's not by choice. Yeah, he's kind of forced to. Yeah, yeah. Maybe because like yeah. he's forced, he's forced to actually trust people to get out of that situation, uh, which I, I've not, which is I think what my why it's my favorite uh, Mad Max movie. There's actually some humanity humanity there, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, he actually does the right thing because it's the right thing to do, as opposed to he's forced to. Yeah, uh, I guess yeah. I'll go hump these Peter Pan <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, oh, but, this is yeah, a tough one. Uh, this is a tough one. Mad Max is is like the the classic. Uh, he's kind of like a man with no name sort of uh, figure. Yeah. Uh, whereas Eleven is, um, I can't think of an archetype really uh, that mutant, she fits. Uh, the supernatural kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Supernatural kid. Because it's weird. It uses the Stranger Things uses a lot of tropes from like the eighties, seventies, uh, and eighties. Um, but I can't think of like a direct allegory. Uh, or comparison for well, eleven. I said yeah, she's I, I she's said a special too. kid. Yeah, but like I'm, I mean I'm talking like specific movie, but uh, well, I, I said just like just nothing's the, come the going mutants, to mind. The X Men, you know. I guess yeah, to an extent, yeah, yeah, yeah. Superhero. She's she's she's, she's a twelve year old uh, female version of Professor X. Yeah, uh, <laughs> or uh, pretty much. She's or also a uh, yeah. or a uh, <laughs> less uh, tragic version of Carrie White. Mm, yeah, mm, true. Go. Good point. <laughs> How much I mean, her want... stories. Her, I, I, I don't know much about Car- Carrie White, but uh, her story isn't exactly happy. <laughs> yeah, <it's>... uh, <laughs> Carrie White's is. I don't know. Carrie's story is pretty fucked. Yeah. Mm. I wanted That's to fair. abort you, but now I love Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, Liam, how much time have we got? 
Uh, two minutes. Two minutes? Okay. Maybe we can minimize Cool Wars to six minutes. We'll see. <laughs> uh, so I, think, I think I have my answer, which I think is probably obvious considering the content of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I was going to say, uh, uh, Lucas, you might want to go to your uh, bathroom, look in your toilet, and what are you going to find? Oh, yeah, that's right. No shit. <laughs> what if there is shit? What if, there, what if Lucas forgot the flush? Yeah, what if there is? <laughs> what if there's poo? Well, then Lucas, need, well, then Lucas needs to break a bad habit. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's uh let's do it ready uh, three two two one one eleven eleven wow oh, then, there we go look at that Anonymous. there's only <laughs> i been kind of one. expected to be alone on that one <laughs> there's only one toss-up on this way in cool wars where i where i said neither and you both voted yeah. for someone else so <laughs> yeah me and me and liam were just voting with our uh with our biases, basically, and yeah. you just said neither. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, Lucas, why don't you take us home? All right, well, if you liked what you heard, uh, please follow us on uh, Spotify and iTunes. Rate us five stars on those platforms. Any other, any other equivalent platforms? Uh, t- uh, tell your friends. Uh, force our show upon your loved ones. Make them subscribe and everything. Uh, you can follow us on social media. Uh, uh, we have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We are at Thunder Lizard Collective on Twitter. We are Thunder Lizard OG. I uh, want to give a special shout out to all, all our patrons. Uh, Patreon.com slash is it Thunder Lizard or Thunder Lizard? Thunder Lizard. Lizard. Patreon.com slash Thunder, Thunder Lizard. Lizard. All right, perfect. And uh, the names of our patrons are Kate, Tanya, Scott, Manos, and Owen. So thank you very much for excellent excellent and we have some other shows uh we have thunder and dragons where i run uh these two as well as our friend dan through some uh epic uh godlike adventures uh we have another show coming out uh pretty soon we've actually recorded the first episode called bookzilla, bookzilla. uh do yeah do we want to reveal what book we're doing i think it's time i think it's all right time. Uh, all right cool. liam you want to hold yours up yep hold on i have we're mine oh all right i'm late hold we're on. reading good omens everybody Oh, my, 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 my Kobo's off. Never All right. Mind. Well, <laughs> good omens. So if you good want omens to. Good by want, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. That's right. If you want to listen to that show, uh, just make sure that before you listen to that show, that you get up to the point in the book where it says Wednesday. Uh, yes. And once you get up to that point, then you will be all caught up with everything that we're doing for that show. That's right. Perfect. Is that all right? Did I miss anything? What no. else we got? I think you, you nailed it on the head there, Lucas. Perfect. Uh, all right. This has been the Thundercast for this week. My name is Christian. My name is Lucas. I'm Liam. See ya. Two cans of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> what a what weird. I'm pretty sure two, your mom two, is... two bags of pasta. Some spices. <laughs> what is this fucking uh, couple Hello cans. Fresh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, just putting my fucking asshole up on the screen. <laughs> That's not what an asshole looks like, but oh, yeah, you've seen your own asshole. Uh, yeah, when I look in my mirror, when there's something stuck to my butt, you look at your own asshole. That's fucking <laughs> weird. I've never looked at my own asshole. <laughs>